About a year ago, I made a video where I sought out to create the best Kingsguard from everyone in Game of Thrones history. It was a lot of fun, and finding the top seven knights in the history of this very esteemed order was very interesting to do, and I just love going through the history in general. I thought I was going to do the same. I thought that, oh, I should go and look for the worst Kingsguard knights in all of history. But then I realized that I think we currently have them. At the current point in the books, at the end of A Dance with Dragons, I think we have the worst Kingsguard in the history of Westeros by a pretty sizable margin. Today, I'm going to be discussing why I think that, going over each of the members of this Kingsguard, and what I think their fates might be in The Winds of Winter. Thank you all very much for joining me, and thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Let's begin. Just to give a brief rundown before we get into the details, the specific whereabouts of all of the members of this Kingsguard are as follows. Kidnapped in the Riverlands, Schrodinger's Cat, in jail in King's Landing, Dorne, worst knight of the Kingsguard ever, somehow worse than him, dead in Dorne, and Zombie. So this Kingsguard is a strange one. They're very scattered about the map, which is pretty unusual for this order, as one of them is currently away in Dorne, one of them is on Dragonstone, and others are in various states of health and at other places. One of them is also in the Riverlands, which I almost forgot to mention. That really leaves the king kind of wanting for guards, and it creates a very interesting situation in the capital, specifically due to the impending trials of both Cersei Lannister and Marjorie Tyrell. This is because both of these individuals are members of the royal family, and if members of the royal family are going to be in a trial by combat, they must be represented by a Knight of the King's Guard. Currently, there are only about four Knights of the King's Guard in or around King's Landing, and that could present a massive issue for both Cersei and Marjorie should they want to demand trials by combat. None of these individuals, save one who we'll get to, are very skilled in combat, and that one has a big asterisk. So having this lack of individuals to stand as champions might mean they won't be able to stand by, for trials by combat. At least Marjorie. Cersei has somebody. Starting first with the newest member of the Kingsguard, Sir Robert Strong is so obviously an undead Greyer Clegane that everyone at court knows it and hasn't brought it up purely out of fear for this undead abomination. He's likely going to serve as Cersei's champion in a trial by combat. However, her uh, champion being revealed would be disastrous to the Lannister cause, specifically because they claim that Gregor was killed, and that was a large reason as to why peace with Dorne was maintained. Supposedly, Gregor's skull was sent to the Dornish, which we see in the Watcher chapter of A Dance with Dragons, and if Gregor were to turn up alive, or kind of alive, Cersei would be revealed to the entirety of the court and the entirety of the continent as a liar, which could spell doom for her political hopes in this new form of King's Landing without Kevin, without Jaime, and pretty much on her own just with her son. There is another Kingsguard who would be in grave danger if Robert Strong were to be revealed, and that is Sir Balin Swan. Balin Swan has been sent to Dorne with that aforementioned skull of supposedly Gregor Clegane, and he is also in the Watcher chapter, where we see him through Ario Hota's eyes. A lot of these Kingsguard knights are actually in every book in the series, which is pretty unique, as the certain characters aren't. Daenerys isn't in every book, Tyrion isn't in every book, but Balin Swan is in every book. He seems to be a better knight than most on this Kingsguard. He's not notably skilled at arms, at least as compared to historical Kingsguard like Aemon the Dragon Knight or Jaime Lannister himself, but he seems to be somewhat of a better person, at least in Jaime's eyes and Tyrion's eyes, as both of the Lannister brothers like him quite a bit. We do hear that in some degree he is plotting with Cersei or ordered to participate in one of Cersei's plots, as Martin does this kind of narrative sleight of hand where we see the beginning of his meeting with Cersei in her fourth chapter of Feast for Crows and the end of it, but don't actually see the contents of the meeting or what happened therein. But we do know from this meeting and from Cersei's perspective that Balin does have some secret objective in his mission to Dorne. What that objective is, is unknown. We know that he is currently heading to the Water Gardens to see Marcella, and it is said by Duran after this point that he will go west in Dorne to High Hermitage to seek Darkstar and hope that this rogue Dane knight is going to answer for the crime of slashing the princess. He's going to be accompanied by one of the Sand Snakes in doing so, and it seems likely that Ariel Hota will also accompany the two of them. This is a pretty interesting plot, and it seems as though Martin would want to have eyes on it, and we have heard comments from him in the past that do seem to indicate 
that this is the direction that Ariel's story will go early on in the Winds of Winter. I'm excited to see it, as it will be interesting to see a Knight of the King's Guard interacting with another sworn knight, though of a different culture and to a different prince. While these Kingsguard Knights aren't very competent at protecting their king, today's sponsor is very competent with helping you protect your finances. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. As a law student slash YouTuber, I have to be fairly conscious of my finances, and this app has helped me immensely. It's helped me can cancel subscriptions that I had that I really had forgotten about for years. They really fall by the wayside, and they just continue to charge you over and over again until you have an actual reason to stop them. Rocket Money informs you and is able to help you stop all of these recurring subscriptions. They also helped me realize that I wasn't getting scammed at one point. I was looking through the app and I saw I was continually getting these small recurring charges for a couple dollars from something in Michigan, but it turns out that was the vending machine at my law school that I was buying snacks from. So I turned out I was not being scammed and Rocket Money helped me find out that I wasn't. It's a really great app, and I highly recommend it for your use, and you can use my code to uh, sign up for it and show that I was able to help you find this app. Uh, to get the tools you need to achieve, achieve your financial freedom, head to rocketmoney.com slash quinthegm to try it out today. Link is in the description. Balin would also take up the tradition of Kingsguard Knights dying in Dorne, as in addition to happening a fair bit with Targaryens historically, we did have one viewpoint character, uh, Knight of the Kingsguard, who died in Dorne in a Feast for Crows, that being Sir Aerys Oakhart, the most important viewpoint character in this entire series, who fell for Arion and ended up losing his head because of it by charging at Aerio Hota for seemingly no reason. So, Really smart guy, really good choice. I really don't mind his chapter, though. I used to really not like it, but it's grown on me as of late. Loris Tyrell is the Schrodinger's cat that I mentioned beforehand. I made a video also about a year ago about Loris Tyrell. He's currently on Dragonstone and supposedly injured in a siege via boiling oil and several broken bones. It seems as though he might not be able to recover from this. But it's unclear, and specifically the information that uh, surrounds his status as injured is pretty questionable, given that we only hear it from Arrain Waters, who in himself is kind of an untrustworthy pirate. If you want more on that, be sure to check out that video. Link is in the card. Uh, and I do warn you, I think I'm sick when I recorded that, if I recall correctly, but I think it's still a pretty good video. It's also worth noting that any Kingsguard tends to be defined by its Lord Commander. Sir Jaime Lannister, while recently improved in morality, does seem to be very lacking in martial capabilities. We see him training with Illyn Payne throughout A Feast for Crows in order to regain the strength that was lost with his sword hand, but he still does not really have any skill at arms. That said, we do see him serve as a fairly uh, sound tactical commander throughout the Wiver Wiverlands, Riverlands in A Feast for Crows, in a dance with dragons and he does seem to be growing a bit more confident in his abilities as a commander which will be interesting to see in the future of the series though he might not be the lord commander of the king's guard for very long especially if aegon takes the throne as i said he's currently kidnapped in the riverlands as he ran off with brienne and really hasn't been seen since and martin has been very tight-lipped on what exactly is going to happen to the pair of them so hopefully jamie's still alive we don't know he can't serve cersei and can't fight in trial by combats though so shucks Sir Osmond Kettleblack is an interesting case. I don't think he's the greatest Kingsguard Knight. He's definitely not the worst among this group, uh, but he does serve as like a triple agent. Tyrion initially thinks that he has the Kettleblacks on his payroll, but actually they're on Cersei's payroll, but actually, actually they're on Littlefinger's payroll. Osmond is a little weird, though. Littlefinger specifically remarks that Osmond has gotten unreliable since putting on the white cloak. It seems as though he has kind of gained this idea of honor and upholding the office that he now holds, which is good. However, uh, there is a false confession given that all three of the Kettleblack brothers had had relations with the Queen, and because of this, Kevin Lannister imprisons Osmond towards the end of A Dance with Dragons, which is where he ends that book. If you're a fan of the show, you probably expect the worst knight on this list to be Sir Mirren Trant, who is one of the worst people on the show, I think pretty undebatably. Um, however, a lot of his more negative traits are A, kind of exaggerated from the books, and B, taken from another Knight of the Kingsguard, who we'll get to next. That said, he is still very mean. We get a lot of accounts of him beating Sansa on Joffrey's request, but other than that, he doesn't really do anything out of the ordinary in terms of cruelty for a Kingsguard under Joffrey. 
Uh, whereas in the show, he is actively terrible at all times, both to Sansa and to Tyrion. And in, over in Bravos, he does some really not great stuff that I don't want to talk about as to not get demonetized. However, he's another character who, for some reason, appears in every book. So good for you, Mirren Trant. Um, overall, he's not the best. And we do hear from Jamie and Tyrion that he is pretty cruel and really just has no loyalty except to Cersei. So not a great guy, that Mirren Trant. However, the worst knight of the Kingsguard for my money under King Tommen and King Joffrey is Sir Boris Blount. Boris Blount is an older, ugly man who is fairly overweight throughout his time. We see him in the books. He's known to be short-tempered and tends to just follow whatever orders his king gives, so long as those orders are pretty cruel. Uh, he is actually removed from the Kingsguard at a certain point in the books, as he's accused of cowardice. However, he gets that seat back after the Battle of the Blackwater, and we see him really not do much with it throughout the later series. He is serving when Joffrey is killed. Uh, he's one of the knights on duty there. And because of that, Jamie reprimands him. He makes Boris Blount the food taster of King Tommen Baratheon, as Boris is known to be a bit overweight, and Jamie kind of leans into that in saying, oh, if you want to protect the king, this is a way you can do so, and not be cowardly about it, because he says that, I believe that uh, carrots and peas will be less frightening than swords for Sir Boros. The most interesting thing about Boros to me is that we know he was supposed to initially die in A Feast for Crows. Thanks to drafts of that book unearthed by Reddit user GSteph, we know that Boros Blount was initially supposed to die of a heart attack in the fourth book of A Song of Ice and Fire. This was changed in the final version, but initially it was going to be essentially uh, him dying and Cersei continuing to spiral because of that. She'll assume that, no, it wasn't a heart attack. It had to be poison. People are trying to poison Tommen. It's probably the Tyrells. It was just going to add to Cersei's kind of growing insanity throughout A Feast for Crows, which was pretty fun. Uh, though, instead, Aerys Oakheart ended up dying in Feast because he was initially supposed to survive and duel uh, Balin Swan when the latter came to Dorne with Gregor's skull, which actually would have been quite interesting. I kind of prefer the draft version to what we actually got, but I do think both are good. So this has been the breakdown on the worst Kingsguard in all of Westeros history. Do you think there are any other knights who bear consideration who aren't a member of Tommen's Kingsguard? I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe while you're down there. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it really helps grow the channel. And I will have more A Song of Ice and Fire content and House of the Dragon content, Game of Thrones content, all that in the very near future. I will have a very important theory video coming out next Monday, which I highly encourage all of you to check out when it drops. It's going to blow you all away, and I fully guarantee that. I will see you all soon. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye, everybody.